I think my slides are visible. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, respected chairperson, thank you for the kind uh, introduction. I'll be trading in your specialty, so definitely I need your support because to induce something for infertility is something's not in my forte. So I'll be presenting for, uh, with respect to endocrinology and uh, uh, thank you, Jadeep and uh, Dr. Rajesh and Vikram and uh, for the wonderful program they have organized. So today I've been given the task to talk about management of female infertility in hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. It's a very common scene in our clinical practice. We come across so many cases. And uh, so let's uh, start with this case uh, since uh, today's presentation is case based. Uh, it's a 16 year old female presented with primary amenorrhea, poor breast development, pubic hairs were P3 and height was 160 centimeters. We go for arm span and weight is 54 kgs. Histories of intact smell because uh, definitely the smell is very important now in this COVID era also. So now somehow somewhere we are more sensitive for this complaint and no history of any abnormal movements and other skeletal defects. Skeletal defects are rarely seen but they are very important and they really help us in making diagnosis. X-ray left hand was done and bone age was 13 years and she uh, chronological age is 16 years. So delayed bone age was there uh, as per the GP that what we use is Grillage pilot charting and biochemical investigations were normal. LH, FSH were prepubertal and estradiol less than 20 picogram per ml. That is very typical and other pituitary hormones were normal. LHRS stimulation though it was not indicated because uh, we just cannot differentiate between uh, CDGP and this, but sometimes it is it was necessary because uh, we were doubting a secondary cause. So USG prepubertal uterus with normally placed ovaries, MRI cella was done, it was normal. Echocardiography was also normal. So this is setting the stage for the case. This is the case which we have, and uh, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, which basically the diagnosis was hypogonadotropic hypogonadism because LH was less, FSH was less, estradiol was less than 20. So it is basically an entity that is failure of gonadal function, secondary to deficient gonadotropin secretion. Depending on the age of the onset, patient may present with delayed or arrested puberty. There are patients who have uh, thilak, there are patients who have uh, pubic hairs, there are patients who have little bit of pubertal signs, or I will say secondary sexual characters. Uh, it depends on what stage uh, there is the onset of hypogonadism. Biochemically, low serum levels of estradiol that is less than 20 picogram per ml occurs in presence of low or inappropriately normal LH and FSH serum levels. Sometimes the LH and FSH may be normal. So in that case, we make the diagnosis of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. So there are so many blah, blah, number of causes. I will not go into that. Uh, acquired causes, structural causes. There are some tumors and the hypothalamic amenorrhea. And uh, because nowadays there are girls who are into exercise, rigorous exercise, stress. So there are so many things. But what is more common is idiopathic hypohypo. And uh, we need to know about whether it is anosmic type or it is not having anosmia. And there are some entities which cause uh, both anosmia, it can have a presentation of anosmia or can have normal uh, this. And this is something, so functional GNRH deficiency accounts to 5% of almost all primary minoria. And when it comes to uh, hypo hypo, it is one of the major players. So the GNRH deficiency in the absence of an anotypical cause is typically reversible, manifests as so-called hypothalamic amenorrhea, usually associated with weight loss, anorexia nervosa, or excessive exercise. This is an entity which is definitely has to be taken care of. Sometimes because of hyperprolactinemia, you can have secondary alterations. Sometimes because of cushions, as Dr. Bhardwaj has uh, was just talking about acromegaly and cushions. So these entities can have little bit of presentation like uh, uh, <clears throat> hypogonadism and uh, massive obesity, especially in context with males. But there is data which says when you have insulin resistance, 
when you have obesity it can definitely affect your uh, gonadal axis and it can present as hypo hypo so congenital causes idiopathic hypo hypo is characterized by a failure of initiation of puberty due to insufficient gonadotropin release thus resulting in failure to develop secondary sexual characteristics and a mature reproductive system currently known genetic defects accounts for 30% of all ihh kalman syndrome hypo hypo and anosmia there are entities where there is anosmia there are entities where there is there's no anosmia and so we need to differentiate the clinical presentator presentation of hypo hypo depends on the time of onset that is congenital versus acquired the severity of the defects and the presence of associated conditions females with carmel syndrome may be suspected in prepubertal girls with anosmia especially when there is already a positive family history patients present with failure of puberty onset primary amenorrhea poorly developed secondary sexual characters or, or infertility girls before puberty have normal stature but pubertal growth uh, growth spurt does not occur frequently unicord and a uh, relative tallness due to absence of long bone epiphysis closure we all know this and uh, since adrenal maturation proceeds normally there are you may get pubic hairs and this is one of the diff important differentiating points when you are fixed when you are finding it difficult to differentiate between cdgp and uh, hypo hypo so this is one of the subtle point which you can take as a help because in hypo hypo you can have pubic hairs but both the axis adrenal and as well both the axis are suppressed cdgp the so partial forms are frequent isolated chronic anovulation estradiol is normal menses can be induced with progesterone and oligomenorrhea these forms have been described as having conceived spontaneously with respect to giving progesterone as a case of primary amenorrhea i'm really against this because this prolonged progesterone intake can lead to poor development of the tubular structure of the breast and later on the girl child may find uh, problems with respect to the appearance with respect to the breast size so that is something which is very important and this very practice in primary amenorrhea should not be the progesterone should not be given at an early point of time of evaluation so that is again a catch point which is required so diagnosis history of delayed puberty definitely any girl who is having not having periods uh, 12 to 13 years from western countries in india we say 14 years family history of constitutional delay of growth and development can be a possibility if there is anosmia chronic illness weight loss excessive exercise stress has to be taken care of and uh, age of menarche menstrual history is important pph and these are things which are more important from the gynae side and they help us because galactoria will indirectly indicate towards hyperprolactinemia so the presence of congenital anomaly and dysmorphic features this is very important the existence of dysmorphology associated with obesity and development there are some syndromes like um, lorenz moon beadle they are rare but and the nystagmus or suspected panhypopituitarism this is a suspicion of septo optic dysplasia where there are so many pituitary hormones which are involved so examination of the external genitalia is very important determine the extent of androgenization pubic or axillary hair extent of uh, breast development pelvic sonography so lab values you definitely need to go this is again very important for the evaluation of primary amenorrhea most of the times we there i have seen people they only go for estradiol they either go for lh or they go for lh and estradiol but dear friends you need to go for lh fsh and estradiol as a whole because it helps us in differentiating with some other subtle causes so that is also important mri brain and olfactory bulb mri can rule out expensive inflammatory or mal in malformative disorders renal ultrasound examination should be made that is because we know about the renal agenesis in kalman syndrome so the treatment options coming to this how do you manage such kind of cases now i have got a 16 year old girl who has not achieved puberty no section secondary sex characters and lh fsh are pubertal and estradiol is less than 20 picograms per ml so the treatment options includes uh, sex steroids gonadotropin choice of treatment but right now the girl has not entered puberty 
she doesn't have the respected or i will say that she doesn't have the adequate secondary sexual characters especially with the breast size so this is the point of time if we introduce progesterone that will lead to poor tubular development of the breast tissue so dear friends don't introduce progesterone at a very start of uh, therapy we need to go slow with the estradiol replacement either something like uh, the mixed form of estradiol like trimarin or estradiol verilate we go with small doses later on we gradually build up the doses and in 6 months to 1 year the child develops the secondary sexual characters and with respect to even the uterine size that can be assessed in uh, subsequent uh, usgs and then she has this breakthrough bleeding we introduce the progesterone and we start uh, having cyclic bleeding in our cases this is what we do as an endocrinologist at this point of time i will say there is only one catch point please don't give progesterone at a very start of therapy even for diagnosis of primary amenorrhea because that lead will lead to poor attainment of secondary sexual characteristics especially with respect to the breast size so priming with estrogen and progesterone for 3 months ovulation induction now now the girl is around uh, i will be covering it later on when she is married now she wants to have a baby so gonadotropin therapy is usually initiated with purified hmg at a starting dose of 75 iu this i am just enumerating because we have got erudite uh, art specialist who will definitely throw light into this so titrating upwards to 300 iu uh, using cycle tracking by usg and use of hmg in advance as this patient has low lh levels lh is required for steroidogenesis so when df is 18 mm we go for the trigger that is scg is administered at a dose of 5000 to 10000 5000 to 10000 international units or recombinant scg of 25 250 to induce ovulation so routine treatment with exogenous progesterone or additional here i will say they require estradiol also and progesterone also and scg definitely and uh, definitely this comes in the domain of the art people and they are better equipped with respect to experience so coming back to our case low dose estradiol was started and gradually dose was increased this what we do in our routine practice she attained her secondary sexual growth and breast development usg revealed attainment of normal uterine size the there is the again the catch is around 6 cm i will say Uh, i may be wrong there are people in from the art who can correct it after 8 months of therapy witness breakthrough bleeding ocp was introduced and she had normal cyclic bleeding again reported at the age of 24 years post marriage she got married as was having a good uh, married life and wanted to conceive so she was referred to an art specialist and she has conceived now and has given birth to a healthy baby so this is what it happens when you properly take care of a hypo hypo most probably a idiopathic hypo hypo so the most common cause of hypo hypo is definitely idiopathic hypo hypo look for anosmia skeletal defects synkinesia detailed history is very important as you know in every of case of endocrinology and differentiate from cdgp there are some subtle points because we will have to wait for 18 years till 18 years 18 years it is definitely hypo hypo if there are some pubic hairs definitely it may point out towards the hypo hypo rather than cdgp and uh, later on there is sp- increase in spurt 10% of this hypo hypo also get puberty so there are so many things which confuse us so stick to the history stick to the basic uh, clinical norms and initial management is the attainment of secondary sexual characters and maturation of pelvic floor maintenance of normal cyclic bleeding and post marriage when conception is required should be referred to an ivs specialist with that uh, i end my talk thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity thank you thanks a lot